Welcome, welcome this week uh, to How to Repair Business Credit uh, here with uh, Hiram here at Credit Suite. We're so excited that you're uh, you're with us here. This is a really exciting live YouTube uh, event that I want to really dive into the details of how to repair business credit. There's a lot of times that we are, uh, you know, uh, faced with uh, with some obstacles in our business. You know, we 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 try to cultivate and and, and make solid decisions for our business, but a lot of times, the, some decisions that we make that is off of our money, uh, it's, it's very difficult to be able to stand uh, you know, on, on our feet and sometimes get ourselves out of certain situations. So we run into uh, you know, possibly tax liens and, and uh, uh, we run into default and situations where it can be a hindrance uh, to our business credit. Uh, and, uh, and, and some of us has been there, uh, but the question is, is there a way out? Obviously we know that personal credit uh, you know, we can always uh, repair, we can always eliminate trade lines that are reporting, uh, you know, that, that are not reporting accurately on our personal repair, or our personal credit, excuse me. But how do we fix business credit? And a lot of times banks will, you know, immediately file for, uh, you know, certain liens and, and will put on, uh, you know, the horrible uh, type of, uh, you know, inaccuracies on a business credit report. But how do we get rid of that? How do we get out of that? How do we have, uh, uh, you know, eliminate the, uh, the this, uh, and what steps do we take to eliminate this off of our, pers our, our business credit? So, um, obviously, you know, we are Credit Suite, Ty Crandall, CEO, Credit Suite, uh, world, you know, international speaker, you know, and he has his book, Discover the Secrets and Power of Business Credit, and he'll also decode this information of his book. So uh, check us out on Amazon or wherever books are sold. A business Credit Decode is a really good book. CEO, Ty Crandall, uh, world-renowned speaker, um, and uh, you can always check it out on on, on uh Amazon Business Credit Decoded. So let's uh, let's get into the details a little bit about this here, right? Now the Business Credit Reporting Agency. So there are a few business credit reporting agencies out there, um, and there are three main credit reporting bureaus for business credit. So the first one and the major player here in all this is what we call Dun and Brassery. They're the big players on this. They are uh, they hold a very large percentage of of uh, reporting, uh, in, you know, in this industry, and they really are the uh, the dominant one in this space. Uh, but then you also have Experian, which is the second in command, like I like to say it. Uh, they also have a piece of the pie, uh, and a lot of banks utilize Experian to to report uh, certain uh, you know trade experiences and then the payment history and uh, and trade accounts. Uh, and then uh, you have obviously Equifax, uh, which is a a solid company. And most of us we, we know what Experian and Equifax is from personal. Uh, for those of you that are in, in credit repair, uh, you know, are very aware of Experian and Equifax and obviously in TransUnion, uh, but it changes a little bit when it comes down to business um, credit. Uh, obviously, Dun & Bradstreet, big player, Experian and Equifax. Um, and then FICO SBSS is, uh, is also vital, uh, which is a, uh, a, a source that you can go that um, they, they are able to retrieve information and data to, you know, gather that information and, and use it to, uh, for, uh, you know, when banks want to pull your business credit report. Okay. So a, uh, what, what are significant business credit scores, right? There are four main, main business credit scores. Dun & Bradstreet, which is a paydex. The scores range anywhere from zero to 100. So, uh, you know, you don't have the FICO, the beacon that runs anywhere from, you know, a, a 388 to a 800 or 850 on personal. They actually go from zero to 100. Um, so if you're in that 80 range, if you're 78 or above or 80 or better, that is considered good credit. That means that since you opened up your business and you started establishing business credit, you have paid every payment on time you have a great payment history pattern, and therefore that's why you are obtaining an 80 or better uh, in a Dun & Bradstreet Paydex score, okay? So remember that word, Paydex. That is what they, they use to, to grade your, um, your business credit report, okay? So Dun & Bradstreet's scoring system is called Paydex. If you ever hear that, that is uh, by Dun & Bradstreet. Okay, experience in Telescore, uh, that's a, a zero to 100 and a 76 or better is good. Okay, same thing with Dun & Bradstreet. If you've been paying, got, have great payment history, utilization is low, you know, you hit all the, the marks of, of, uh, of good, uh, you know, 
good credit, good payment history, good utilization, uh, that is where you're going to find yourself uh, with an Experian Intel score. Uh, and then, of course, Equifax credit score uh, is at is zero to one hundred as well. Ninety or better, uh, they're the highest ones when it comes into Equifax. Uh, but ninety or better is where you have a, a great payment history with Equifax. All right, FICO SBSS, FICO Small Business Scoring Service. Uh, they they have their own way of of scoring as well. Uh, but uh, you'll see that it come from time to time. Not big like the big three players like Dun & Bradstreet Experian and Equifax, but they're, they're there. Uh, and you'll be able to see the uh, the, uh, the FICO SBSS come up um, in, in, in through certain banks. A lot of banks are starting to utilize that system. Okay. So disputing area. Uh, let's get into that. Let's dive into the details. A big part of repairing your business credit means d disputing errors. Okay. If you made a payment and on time, and you have your checks, you know, your checks that you're balancing your end of month reconciliations for your business. You're, you, you know that you made that payment on time and they report it because their processing system uh, or wherever they, they, uh, they use, um, you know, it's obviously they didn't report on time. So now that puts a bad payment history on your business credit report. Okay. Um, all the business credit reporting agencies want their reports to be right. OK, because that is what helps them in their credibility process. That's what helps them to outshine and be be the top of the of the food chain, if you will, when it comes down to business reporting. OK, so it is very important to to that they have the right information and it's accurate as possible and accurate as can be so that all this information can get reported accurately to the business credit reporting. So, uh, you know, they welcome disputes. It's very important to them that when you present to them and say, listen, uh, such and such company, American Express or, or uh, you know, uh, possibly uh, Bank of America or whatever revolving line or, or even a vehicle under the company name is not reporting this information accurately. Um, so they are welcome this information and credit reporting agencies will welcome disputes in any given moment. OK, uh, they have different, you know, different means of disputing. Uh, so be sh sure to check and make sure that you have the right information in place because they report differently from credit reporting agencies to others. OK, and they have a different process from one to another. And this, this, uh, disputes nearly always mean receipts and other proof, just like I was explaining to you earlier. If you have the payment receipt, if you have a check that you mailed in, it's very important and it's crucial as a business owner to have your books in line to make sure that you have the right information to back up what you're requesting. OK, if there's a tax lien or if there's a, a still a UCC showing on the business when the loan has been paid two or three years ago, you need to be able to eliminate those things to be able to show that you are have a great payment history and it's very important to make sure that you have always have proof to back up what you're requesting if that bank reported the information wrong way if that bank was was uh, uh you know it, it put some wrong information in there that you know liens or judgments or anything like that you have to be able to show that document stating no you're you're wrong um and the the, the information has to be crystal clear Right. You cannot be able to just show something that you wrote in a napkin uh, or something that you thought. But it has to be shown with with proof that everything has been, been um, went down correctly. Now, the other thing I also want to talk about very briefly here is when you're communicating with them, any time that you open up a dispute, any time that you, uh, uh, you know, open up a, a file or anything with the, and you're challenging anything, you have to make sure that whoever you speak to, you have their name. You have the time that you called, the day that you called, their full name, so that you can always refer back to that person that gave you a certain amount of information. And the reason why is because you know how it is. In these call centers, they may have 200, 400, 600 employees, and, and you're trying, and, and the person didn't take notes and put, you know, notate it your file, this information gets lost. So make sure that you're always putting this information, uh, you know, you send this information in, make sure you gather the, the, the data, make sure who is the person you're talking to, the day and the time, so that they can always go back to their files uh, and, and look at the notes and who you talk to. And it'll be much easier instead of getting bounced around so many departments and, and, and you can't find the one person that you spoke to. OK, uh, and um, and then even clearer than you may think you need to be. It's very important that you need, again, to back everything up with the information that you have on file. Communication is very important. Get data, get information, gather it all up and make sure that everything that they say, it's written down so that you can remember and refer back to your notes. 
Okay, so that Dun and Bradstreet business credit scores. Uh, the pay to score shows uh, it shows how a company has paid its bill over the last 24 months. Solid, right? Right there, right in your face. So the paydex is really going to go and take a, a uh, an average of 24 month payment history, and that's what triggers, and that's the formula that they use to uh, create a paydex score for you. Uh, the paid the paydex is the most popular business credit score out there. I kind of covered that with you a little earlier. Uh, the DMB rating shows a company net worth range based on company financial statements as well as a company's overall condition. That's huge. That for for a company to gather that much information to be able to put it on the reporting a uh, you know uh, to show it and report it on on their uh, paydex score that is huge because guess what when you're looking to close on a, a government contract or you're looking to close on a big deal with a, a big player a big major company a lot of times they're going to run your Dun and Bradstreet number and they want to see what your company net worth is and they're going to want to see what your financial statements look like so it is crucial to be able to have Dun and Bradstreet updated in with every piece of information, not only financially, but also when a company's, uh, you know, really worth and what they paid through this time. It is so important for you to know what information is being put on there and that is up to date at all times. Okay. So a paid exit uh, is, is dollar weighted, right? So Dun & Bradstreet gives more weight to higher limit accounts over smaller limit ones. So this is a really cool, neat formula that they use. So ensure that you have, uh, you know, higher limit accounts over smaller limit ones. Okay. So when let's say you get yourself a net 30 or net 55, cause you have to stack, you have to be able to stack and show banks that you have, that you're credible, that you are, you're in business, that you're doing some solid things. Okay. So it, it is super important that you get yourself some net 30s and some net 55s to show a really high limit and then your utilization is low because it is better to have five high limit net 30s than to have a five thousand dollar revolving uh with you know your utilization is all the way to the top uh so let me give you an example you get five trade lines that are net 30s and then one of them is a uh, you know a um, networking company that gives you a twenty thousand dollar limit and all you're using is a thousand plus you got another one that is a web di website designer that gives you a thirty thousand dollar limit and you're only using about two grand of that that is weighted more than having just one revolving line that is uh that has a limit of about five grand or maybe two thousand dollars so something to keep in mind when it comes down to work in the system in your favor so that you can really increase that paid x score so more weight goes to trade accounts reporting higher amounts of credit extended and less weight goes to trade accounts reporting lower amounts of credit being extended. Remember that. That's a really good form to write that down. Uh, and then, of course, past performance and bill payment is a main driver of this number. So payment history is a huge number when it comes down to that. You can have 20, 23 payment history or, or, or one trade line that has 23 payments showing a perfect and one payment that goes that becomes late or one payment that dating report accurately can really bring down your score drastically when it comes down to Dun and Bradstreet. So keep in mind, do everything that you can to make sure that every payment is paid on time when it, with Dun and Bradstreet and to increase your paid score and keep it up there. The more payment, better payment history you have, the more trade lines you have, the better reporting that you have, the more you're going to entice and bring other banks that want to do business with you. Because when they see 24 months of payment history, 20 or 25 trade lines reporting, this is important. This is, this is crucial. This is going to open up new doors and opportunities here for you when it comes down to lending and funding. Okay. Uh, a business can get a good business paid X score by paying suppliers and vendors promptly. Okay. So again, going back to net 30s and net 55s, it is important that you understand that this is what's going to drive uh, you to get great banks to jump on board with you when you need, you know, maybe an unsecured business fine funding or business line of credit, they will be looking at your paid X score. And this is crucial and important so that you can open up that opportunity with those banks. Okay. Uh, your paid X score is, is uh, broken down. Let's look at that for really quick here. Uh, uh, expect payment may, may come early. Uh, so 30 days sooner than terms. All right. Sometimes you'll find that they'll give you 30, uh, 60 days, 90 days to, for, to the first payment or, or an extension. So, uh, uh, you know, expect payment to make, you know, make, may come in a little earlier. So it's always good to pay it before the 30 day term. Don't wait on day 30. Do not wait on day 29. If you can get that, that invoice paid uh, completely or even just whatever payment it has is agreed upon, 
you can get and really boost your paid score the way you need it to do. All right, uh, 90, payment comes with within early discount period. So 20 days or sooner than terms, okay? Uh, 80 paid score payment is prompt. A 70 payment comes in 14 days be, uh, beyond terms. A 60 payment comes 21 days beyond the terms that they gave you. So that this is this is this means that if your payment date is on the 30th, you're coming in on the 14th and making that payment. That's not going to drive it up. So there, then you be you fall into a medium risk, sometimes into a high risk, uh, uh, le, uh, uh, you know, borrower. And that is not where you want to be. You want to be up there in the 80 and more with prompt payments, early payments. Uh, for 20 days sooner or even 30 days sooner, okay? Uh, 50 paid score payment comes 30 days beyond terms. So that means that you're already over uh, over that 30 day mark and you can possibly be at, at 60 day um, before that payment has been done. That's not good. 40 uh, score means that your payments are coming in 60 days beyond terms. 30 means your payments come 90 days beyond terms. It was just, that's like when you, when you received a red bill, right? If you ever guys gotten that in the mail, it's, it's a red bill. It's like final notice, pay it or we sent you to the collections. Uh, and then 20 comes 120 days beyond terms. And then uh, past that, you, you're, you're really in the high risk section there. Um, and a lot of lenders do not like to see uh, high risk borrowers, okay? Especially when you're a startup. When you're a startup, this is your time to shine, clean slate. Okay, you have a clean slate, brand new business uh, that that just barely got the EIN, or maybe you've had the EIN two or three years, and you have not put your your um, your credit to use. It, it is time to shine from the moment that you apply for your first trade line to you keep on stacking more trade lines on there. You have to show a really solid payment history. So this is where to be, the eighty uh, uh, to one hundred that show low, shows low risk. You get more attention from other bigger and better banks, and uh, that's how you grow business credit into the six figures, uh, seven figures, so on and so forth. Okay, disputing DMB. Um, now, don't forget one thing. I need to. I let you know. Subscribe and uh, click and subscribe here to our YouTube channel. We're al always putting out information here for you. Uh, so again, uh, click and subscribe in the bottom there, and uh, love to see you guys uh, come here. So uh, again, disputing uh, Dun and Bradstreet. Uh, you know, get your company's paydex score uh, to report at www.dnb.com forward slash about uh, uh, hyphen us forward slash our um, hyphen data dot hotmail.com. Okay, uh, this is going to where you're going to be able to report any information to Dun and Bradstreet. You can always reach out DNB paydex customer service telephone number is 800 234 Duns. It's one eight hundred two three four Duns three eight six seven. Okay, uh, and, uh, and uh, they they want you to dispute via telephone. Okay, so this is important. Uh, they they like for you to have uh, your information, but they always like to talk with you online uh, over the phone. Excuse me. Uh, so make sure that you can reach out to them at one eight hundred two three four D U N S, and make sure that you have your Duns number handy when you call. Okay, don't don't look for information. They try to get you off the phone pretty quickly. Uh, because their agents are, are timed for the call. So you want to make sure you have all your information ready to go. Uh, and if you want to learn a little more information and learn more about Paydex here at www.dnb.com forward slash glossary forward slash Paydex. Okay, that's disputing DMB. You have any issues, any difficulties, you need to call and reach out here to them. Make sure you can dispute and you can get that going so that you can enhance your uh, business credit building experience. Okay, uh, DMB disputes. Very important. Uh, you can log into uh, you know their their website and it'll show you everything that you need to know. Uh, you know by by diving into the details of uh, of DMB disputes. Uh, it is very important that that you when you go into their website, this is what it looks like, um, and you can open up a dispute to their website once they tell you. Uh, what is what is uh, what is needed to get done? But you would put your Duns number here, your company number, your address number here, and then you can start the process. Um, and if you need to submit uh, any type of financial statement, or you need to uh, you know uh, investigate payment experiences, or even view and print company report, you can do it right here. Uh, it's a very easy website to use. Um, so that's what what it looks like. Uh, moving on along, we have a DMB disputes. Uh, we, you know, if you need to put in uh, information, like for example, the collateral, 
um, you know, this, this information is public filing data. Uh, and in this information that, you know, you basically putting all the information that you need to know that they need to know about you. Like, what is the collateral that you're looking, that you're looking to dispute? You know, what type is it? Um, you know, the, the party, the, the, you know, the debt or uh, the filing number, uh, you know, all that information will get updated here with DMB disputes. Okay, and uh, obviously the filing, uh, public filings is here, and the payments are here. Um, once you get into it, it's very easy. You know, you should know what to do once you follow and you, you log into your Dun and Bradstreet. But it's very easy to dispute with them, uh, and very good company to do that with. Okay, uh, Experian, uh, business credit scoring. Uh, you know, obviously again, Experian is called IntelliScore, and uh, and they're the, the second most popular score after Paydex. And uh, with the, uh, the, the Intel score, uh, it allows you your most recent score system uh, is with Intel score plus. Okay. Uh, Intel score plus takes into account hundreds of variables to offer a score between zero to 100. And uh, it predicts a business risk of going seriously delinquent over 91 days late or having a major financial issue like bankruptcy in the next 12 months. So it is important that, very similar to Dun & Bradstreet and even uh, Equifax, uh, you, you have to be able to, if you want to boost that score, you have to find yourself making that payment before the 30-day mark, uh, even making that payment uh, you know, within that 15-day mark uh, you know, before it's sent in uh, or before they receive it. So that way your payments always get there on time and you can boost and get closer to that uh, the higher mark, okay? Uh, in Telus, in Plus, uh, you know, there's over 800 aggregates of, of, of factors, of, you know, in, in a, that, that affect your credit score. Uh, so one of the few things here is the experience first reviews business data segments like uh, uh, firm or graphics, public records, collections, and trade information. Then it places each business in one of three different models. This is important for you to write this down. Uh, I mean, it offers a blended owner model with both commercial data and owner's consumer information. So there's a mix in here, okay? Opposed to, uh, you know, Dun & Bradstreet, they're looking at other different uh, segments in, uh, in your personal and also the business to determine, um, you know, in a, in a Telescore Plus. Uh, so a lot of times when you pull your your um, your business uh, experience or your Telescore, excuse me, you'll find that there's there's risk factors involved that determine your credit and also the business credit. Then it aggregates this information, puts it in factors, and that's how it affects your uh, business credit, okay? Um, since this score is, includes consumer data, it is one of the only scores someone needs your permission to pull. So uh, don't worry about too much uh, about the information that you, know, you, you have, uh, you know, it's a hard pull, whatever the case is. It, it, it's not going to affect it too much when it comes down and it's mixed with business credit. So make sure that when this information is getting sent over, it's not like it's a real bank. Uh, you know, you are able, just like personal credit, you are able to pull your your you know your credit once a year when it comes down to Telescore and it doesn't affect it, uh, as long as you're not doing it every three months, right? Uh, but yeah, you you will need a permission to pull your Telescore Plus uh, because it involves your business and also it involves your uh, personal, okay? 76 to 100 is low risk. Keep that in mind. So when you find yourself trying to apply for a vehicle, let's say through Toyota Financial Services uh, or Financial Services to obtain a vehicle through them, um, you know, they're going to they're gonna pull your, your um, IntelliScore and they're going to determine if your payment history with uh, is, is valid, you know, your payment history personal and your business, and then they're going to come up with a, uh, a determining factor. But the higher you get into the 76 and above, the more the, the less risk you are and the more they want to do business with you, okay? 11 to 75 is medium risk. We need to get ourselves over that hump uh, because medium risk is still kind of iffy. Remember, banks work off of high risk. So when the, the more low risk that you show to a bank, along with some payment history, some trade lines, great payment history on your Intel score, the more you're going to be able to apply and get approved for whatever you need. Okay. And then of course, one to 10 is, is very high risk. We usually find that a lot of business start at that one to 10. And it's not a fact that, that 
you had a bad payment history. It just has, you just don't have anything. You haven't started anywhere. So they start you off at a high risk. Uh, they'll give you a determining number or factor that says, okay, you can only maybe apply for a, a max of, of a thousand to $2,000. And that's all we can give you right now. And a lot of the, the net thirties and net 55s will, will give you terms based off what they see on your IntelliScore. Okay, so it, with experience with experience blended uh, scoring, when trouble hits, a business blended score drops an average of thirty percent over the four quarters leading up to the bad event. Okay, this is huge. Uh, you know, when you when 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 you're finding yourself in trouble, when you're finding yourself in need, and there's some, some bad payment histories, uh, either personal and and business, uh, those blended scores will drop an average of thirty percent. So if you're at a eighty, uh, you know, you do the math. Um, it's uh, you know that's a uh, a good 32 points right there that you're dropping from 80 down, and uh, and it, and it goes over a you know four quarters leading up to that the, the, the event of the event, so uh, or the time of the event. So it can go out to a full year reporting on your personal credit and will affect your score. Okay, so something to keep in mind: if the payment was done, uh, it was missed this month, and it reports this month, you got another 12 more months before you you know either you got to stack your per, your business credit with some really great payment history from there uh, and have a, a good amount spread out on your business credit portfolio um, or uh, or you got to pay attention to this a little more so that you don't find yourself with a bad pay, uh, payment history. Uh, but consumer scores of an owner show no, no statistically significant decline over the same period. So make sure that you find yourself uh, with paying attention to the business credit report and get yourself in with a company like NAV, uh, you know, that way you can evaluate and see what's happening on a month to month. That way you're not late on anything. Uh, that way it reports correctly. Okay. And then of course the score evaluates personal information on the owner as it relates to business performance. This is huge. So keep in mind, you got to have, you know, good payment history on, on yours as well so that you can get what you need in order for it to, um, report accurately. Okay, Experian IntelliScore breakdown. So let's look at this here for a, a little bit. Uh, it has five different components. Okay, uh, hi, you know, hi, historic behavior, right? That's five to 10%, uh, that's a factor. The other factor is age, industry, and size. Okay, industry is huge. Um, uh, when it comes down, a lot of people say, so, so the, you know, what industry I'm in, um, you know, it depends on what my score is. So you wanna make sure that you have, uh, a, a good in, that you're in a good industry, um, and that you, when you're naming your business, that you're naming your business. Uh, you know, if it's trucking, well, you know, you want to kind of eliminate, uh, you know, the trucking out of there because that's a high risk industry, and a lot of times banks don't want to do business with you, right? But that's another that's another uh, live event that we'll get more into the details. But five or ten percent uh, has to do with age, industry, and size. Uh, credit utilization is important, just like personal. Uh, derogatory items is uh, is a major player here with 10 to 15 percent, uh, and then of course payments and balances. Uh, that's the biggest one of all. So, payments and balances is 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 big. Uh, when it comes down to your payments, you got to make them on time. Remember, clean slate, brand new business, especially a brand new business. You you got to have great payment uh, history and good balances. Uh, and in, in Telescore bases number of trade experiences is important. The more positive history that you add on there, the more positive history and payment history that you're adding on there with low utilization, uh, with, uh, with uh, per, uh, pay, you know, perfect payment history and history behavior and, uh, you know, the size of your company and the, the utilization and, you know, no derogatory items on there, the better you're going to do when it comes down to uh, the, uh, the IntelliScore. Uh, outsta outstanding balances. Okay, that's huge. Um, again, going back to paying it on day 30, not going to work. You got to pay it up before, you know, sooner than that. Uh, payment habits. You know, you know, how do you pay your bills? Um, you know, you need to have some sort of system in place. If you can't remember things, you got to have an app. Bring on an app. If you're one man team or one man, woman team and that's, you know, your company, you, you have to be able to have some sort of app remind you when these payments are due and give yourself a little cushion. Sometimes you have to pay two payments in advance so that you can find yourself, um, you know, ahead of the game. Okay. Uh, credit utilization, we kind of covered that. It's it's credit utilization, it's 10 to 15%. The uh, the trends over time, you know, it's a history of uh, behavior. Where are you? Uh, and public record recency, frequency, and dollar amount. 
that is uh, that is huge. Uh, the other one here is demographics, like years on file, SIC codes, and business size. Okay, um, that that has a determining factor on on risk. Uh, just like I said, you know, if you're in real estate and you're you're flipping homes, you're wholesaling homes, that's a high risk industry. But you know, good enough, it's five to ten percent of the of the uh, scoring system. Uh, it, it you know they'll put you in a, in a high category, but you can always overcome that. Uh, with credit utilizations, trends, and payment ha habits, and of course, keeping uh, you know making sure you don't go into any outstanding balances. Okay, um, and of course, disputing Experian. This is a really good one here. Uh, you know, you got to get your your your, your company's Experian report at Business Credit Facts. Uh, that's www.businesscreditfacts.com forward slash pdp dot aspx uh, question mark pg equals search form. OK, uh, that's how you can be able to dispute inaccuracies on your on your small or your small business experience report by following the directions here, um, which is on this site, experience.com, small business forward slash business credit inform uh, information dot GSP. Uh, and then, of course, or you can dispute online here. Uh, they're one of those companies that um, are, are pretty automated. Uh, so uh, you can always go to uh, www.experience.com disputes forward slash main HTML uh, and put in your requests. The other thing here we also want to uh, do is experience uh, disputing Experian by other means. Okay, business dispute at Experian.com. Uh, if you need to utilize uh, them to, you know, send that information in, you can use this business disputes at Experian.com. If you have any other questions, uh, RFR at Experian.com. Uh, you also have a uh, Experian Commercial Relations Department. Okay, uh, and then you also have the PO Box 5001, which is Costa Mesa, California. Um, and um, that's basically it when it comes down to Experian. Uh, Experian starting score, uh, you know, they, they usually have the company background. Um, you know, they, uh, you'll see that the companies, you know, they say a company like this, if it's 1976, I think it's headquartered in such and such state. Uh, it's a real estate firm. Uh, the, co the company offers property management, facility management, condominium sales, and all that good stuff. So the, the credit ranking score uh, is high risk. Okay, uh, and the reason why is because uh, real estate is a high risk industry. Okay, uh, we all know what happened in the housing boom and, the, and what happened to mortgages and all that good stuff. So, it, it, they have a bad reputation for defaulting on loans. So, a larger percentage of those loans that are generated uh, uh, and initiated or originated for uh, uh, real estate are high risk to begin with. So, when it comes down to the you know having a real estate agency, a wholesale company, or whatever it is, you will find that that Experian, Dun & Bradstreet, and Equifax will gear towards high risk based on the fact that it is a high risk industry to begin with, okay? So right here, what we have is a trade payment in, uh, information uh, or trade uh, payment history. Uh, you know, you have your different services and when the reported dates are. Uh, you know, you have different uh, the building material, communication, distribution, financial services, uh, lumber and wood. So we got some, we got some net 30, some net 55s. We have some revolving here. Um, you know, we got some, uh, you know, varied, uh, you know, you got 200 on a recent high and then you have balances and then you, you have the different, uh, types of account that is, and you're, are always, uh, are always showing, uh, when it, when it comes down to if an account has been closed, um, or if, if a payment history has been deleted or the account has been closed. So most of the time when a, when a bank is, is putting a, a payment history or a bank is putting, they need to put detail because they uh, close the account on you because you were over your utilization. Did most of this information will show up here. Uh, now payment terms, uh, when you're reading the report, some of them will say varied. Okay. And that just means that the, the information is not really fully, uh, put out, uh, but you can see net 30 and the varied means that uh, it's more like a, um, uh, a uh, actually an account, but like a revolving. Uh, you'll see revolving accounts, you'll see line, credit line uh, revolving or anything like that. It will show varied. Uh, right here, show contracts, so the installments or anything like that. Uh, revolving as well as another, uh, you know, uh, term that they would put on there. Uh, and then right here, you will have other types of uh, companies that, uh, you know, lumber and wood. So this is a real estate. They're probably doing some flips. They're probably doing some wholesale. But this is how to read your report. Basically, the account is here, your reported date, the act activity date, payment uh, terms, what type of terms are they providing you, uh, you know, recent high credit, the balances that you're carrying. Uh, and then obviously, this is a very important 
uh, part of it, of it all. Keeping it up to, you know, paying it under that 30 day mark is very important and crucial here to you and your business. Um, you know, this is a continued page on, on what we have here. We have an auto lease. Uh, obviously, they're going to put the full amount of the vehicle that you purchase, although there's a residual and a money factor that's involved in an auto lease. Uh, but they're usually going to take the full amount and then they're going to have it shown, uh, you know, payment history here and dates and all that good stuff. Uh, credit card shows revolving, revolving. Um, and uh, and then you have different net tens and all that good stuff here, leasing and all that paint company. So you, you have a, a couple different, uh, you know, this is, again, a, a company that does wholesaling or their real estate, property management and all that good stuff. So you can see where all that information that they use is strictly for, for the business. Okay. Um, and then we continue here uh, that when a collection filing is put up or sometimes you have a, uh, uh, you know, an account that is open account or, uh, you know, there's a, an account that goes over a certain amount, you can always dispute. This information is where you want to go to. So a lot of times you go like a thick company like this, like AG Adjustments LTD. Um, you know, you have the telephone number to the agency that's that's in charge of of uh, reporting this information. Uh, obviously, we want to dispute this information first and, and send in the accurate data that you need to so that they can remove it. The the uh, the credit agencies, the way that they work, uh, or the credit reporting agencies, if they are not, uh, they don't have the information that you are providing them, and they will uh, immediately close that file and keep that on there. So that you have to make sure that you have all the information up to date, accurate. And then when you're submitting to get your, um, uh, the information uh, deleted, uh, or updated, you have to be able to explain why it's that you want them to do that. Okay. Uh, you know, you can say as far as, uh, you know, never received bill, uh, never received information from, uh, uh, you know, that, that, that payment was, you know, or, or the, uh, the amount wasn't paid in full. So you have to be able to put some information in there for them to have it. Obviously AG adjustments has a certain period of time that they have to reply and have to respond. Most of these companies don't want to bother with it. So that's how you are able to get these deleted or at times, get them to be removed or fixed where you don't have a balance on here, okay? Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll put the amount collected as, as zero or amount disputed zero because obviously there's nothing there that they have to report, okay? Uh, so an experience sample six months later, you will see that as payment history in, increases, as you continue to move in and send some really good data in there, for example, adding trade lines that are, are reporting positively, adding trade lines and keeping utilization down, history behavior now starts to change. The algorithms change uh, totally. That's where you'll see going from a high risk industry where they had you as a high risk, and then it moves over to a low risk with a credit rating of 93. This is solid, okay? That's a solid credit score when it comes down to an IntelliScore. And all that, that, that comes from is from payment history, payment behavior, uh, utilization, uh, and, uh, and new trade lines as you continue to add better and bigger trade lines with uh, bigger limits, okay? Uh, and ex another example, this is a continuation of that. When you start seeing uh, a distributor, financial services, you see, look at this type of uh, credit they're giving you. Look at the utilization. Uh, you know, look at the, you know, office equipment, 9,400, a little high on the, on the 6,100, but um, I mean, looks solid, right? Uh, a continuation of that page here as well. Uh, you know, you have a credit card, it's a $28,000 credit card, and uh, it only has a $1,700 balance on there. Um, and then, you know, obviously this is okay because leasing, you know, you notice that there's no, it says charge off and that's bad, but there's some really solid payment history and it's showing 100 and current, 100 percent and current. Um, you know, well, this is good stuff here for you. Um, so it'll eat up this charge off, and a lot of times the banks won't see this information or will overlook it because you're feeding your business credit report with better and more recent stuff. Okay, uh, that's enough for experience. Let's look at Equifax business credit scoring system. And like I stated, Equifax is uh, one of the bigger players as well. They're, they're like number three, if you will when it comes down to, uh, uh, you know, the reporting agencies. And um, the neat thing about uh, uh, Equifax is that they're, you know, they, they report to personal. So most of you have experiences with Equifax, right? Uh, but Equifax is, uh, they have their own scoring system. And uh, it's mainly, you know, main business credit scoring model is, 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 is the credit risk score, excuse me. 
Uh, this score was created to predict the probability of a business customer becoming seriously de delinquent, obviously at the 90 day mark, that's considered really late and delinquent in a 12 month period. Uh, so that's neat because, you know, they kind of give you a little bit of a leeway when reporting. Um, and uh, you will find that sometimes at the 30, 60 day mark, if you forgot a bill, they're, they're not so hard and heavy on the way that they score. But you don't want to find yourself with that, right? Because there may be a bank that reports to Experian and Equifax. So you, your Experian is a little more serious and, uh, and they, they look at things and they're on top of the reporting more than Equifax is. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind, it's, uh, you know, once you start approaching that, you know, going over that 30 day mark, 60 day mark, and you're approaching that 90 day mark, you're definitely going to look at lower scores and lower scores indicate a higher risk of serious delinquency like paydex based on payment history and uh, equifax credit risk factors are based on 90 plus right so 90 plus means that you paid as agreed 80 to 89 means that you're in that 130 days uh, overdue right so that means that you're paying at day 31 um and then you have 60 to 60 to 79 score that means that you're at 31 to 60 days which is overdue 40 to 59 uh experience facts score excuse me not experience it's a 61 to 90 days overdue horrible right and then you got 20 to 39 uh, uh score with 91 120 days overdue so at that point in time right here 31 to 60 days you're you know you're looking at a high risk right here you're looking at a medium risk uh but you never want to find yourself uh, you know over that one to 30 days overdue, uh, even with Equifax. And a one to 19 score is 120 days overdue. By that time, they're already doing uh, proceedings and they're they they're looking to default that account uh, and send it into judgment. So you gotta be careful when it comes down to that 120 day plus mark, okay? Uh, this, to dispute Equifax, uh, you know, you can dispute it just like um, you are with Experian. Uh, you can submit your information to equifax.com forward slash business forward slash credit information. Um, and you can also dispute your small business Equifax report by following the directions here at equifax.com forward slash small business uh, hyphen FAQs forward slash hashtag dispute hyphen FAQs. Um, you will need to, re uh, to send a research request form, which is available by uh, going to HTTPS um, www.equifax.com forward slash CP forward slash mail L, uh, in disclosure request pdf and uh you can you know send your information and the uh, the proof that the information has been paid uh you're reporting inaccurate this information is not for my business it's another company that is another you know side of the states whatever is needed um the equifax is very easy to dispute um so it, the re the research request form is very simple you want to put in uh, your uh, business name uh, the reported business address, and you can find that in by pulling your Equifax score, and that's usually um, at the at the end page where it shows the inquiries. Uh, the principal, guarantor name, mailing, uh, you know, all this information, very easy, self-explanatory. That information you will fill out with any type of proof or any forms that you have to uh, submit uh, through Equifax disputes. Again, Equifax, um, pay, uh, Dun & Bradstreet, and Experian, they will give the, uh, the um, you know the company who is putting information down uh, that is inaccurate they will give them a certain amount of time I believe it's about 30 days where they have to reply back uh, with some sort of information or data and obviously it's very difficult for them to a lot of times try to do this because by that time it's bounced around uh, you know different companies uh, and they they don't have that information to gather and every time it switches hand from the main grantor to the person who is, is disputing the information or have put your information up for default or judgment then it gets bounced around for pennies on the dollar uh, and that bad debt gets you know just transferred about three or four times before before uh, you can dispute it and a lot of times they cannot prove any information and that's when it then gets deleted for you okay uh, so FICO's business credit scores uh fico sbss score uh they're, they're they're coming up they're one of the major players now that you'll, you're we're seeing when it comes down to business credit and it's measure of a small business credit worthiness um you know fico we recognize fico beacon a lot of times when it comes down to personal credit uh and fico uh, business credit scores they're they're measuring uh, the type of business that it is uh and of course becoming very popular with lenders um, it gives the lenders a more bigger picture um, uh, that they're looking for, uh, but they, like I said, they're not as big as Dun & Bradstreet, 
but a lot of more lenders are jumping on board with FICO driven credit scores because they're looking for specific data that they want to look into to determine if you're a company that they would want uh, to loan money to. Uh, definitely widely used uh, you know, by SBA to qualify business loans. So if you're in the market for an SBA 504 or whatever it is, you know, you want to make sure that this information is accurate, up to date. Um, and it's based on both based on both personal and business credit, just like experience, uh, and uh, not just business as main business scores um, do now. Uh, but you know that's one of the things. If you're looking for an SBA, a lot of times you're going to have to sign for that loan, and FICO is is what's going to determine if you are a candidate for an SBA. Uh, so FICO data combinations. Creditors can refine the scoring by uh, by weighing different factors. Um, and it's highly intelligent score as it automatically goes from one business credit bureau to another in order or priority, uh, the credit issuer chooses to generate a score, okay? So it's one of the only ones right now that is able to kind of run a, uh, a full background and run it all in one. And, um, you know, where Dun & Bradstreet, if that bank just reports to Dun & Bradstreet um, and another bank pulls your Dun & Bradstreet and that's all the information that you have. If one uh, loan didn't go well with Equifax, but that bank only looks at at, um, at the Dun & Bradstreet, then you're in luck. But if now you, they use the FICO data combination scoring system, the issue that you're going to find there is that they'll be able to, you know, the bank will be able to determine and run Dun & Bradstreet experience and Equifax, and plus your personal and look more into the details of your score. So, Keep that in mind. More banks are coming out of the woodwork and saying, okay, we want to use FICO data combination or FICO driven scores to be able to jump from and pull different reports or try merge uh, uh, reports to determine a internal scoring system. Because a lot of banks have internal scoring systems. They'll have, okay, so I want to see a paydex and my paydex reads 80. Uh, my you know, experience reads a, a, a 80. Uh, my um, you know, Equifax reads an 80. Well, that's great. But now once you hit all three, um, you know, you know uh, links that they want you to hit, well, they'll use your personal. And then at that same time, they'll move it into an internal system that they use. And sometimes banks use systems like one through 100 to determine if their internal scoring system is where, you know, based off of risk, based off of credit worthiness, based on payment history, based on utilization, if you are a, a, a you know, or your business is a good candidate for a, a loan or a lending vehicle that they offer. Okay. Um, and then, of course, if there isn't enough data to generate a score, it then gets automatically checks another business score like the experience the telescore, or it can even move on to Equifax commercial data. Very important. They will use other types of scoring mod models to determine a, a loan for you. Um, dispute FICO, right? Uh, dis dispute your FICO SBSS score through NAV, right? NAV is a big player when it comes down to, um, you know, generating uh, your 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 score and also uh, checking on your score and what's on there. So you can use the link here, uh, app.nav.com forward slash registration uh, and use that link here. That way you can, uh, you know, pull your score. And then uh, because this score comes from the other, because uh, it comes from the other scores, your, your recourse for disputing it is, is to dispute your company score with Experian, Paydex, and Equifax. Uh, so FICO uses the other scoring system to be able to dispute to them, but you can do that through NAF. And given that the FICO SBSS is also based on your personal credit history, you should also investigate and perhaps dispute your transunion scores. Okay, super important. Uh, this information, uh, you know, a lot of, Banks are wanting to move in the direction of tying in personal with business, and they've been doing it for a long time. But obviously, our goal here is to detach ourselves from the business so that we don't find ourselves personally guaranteeing every loan that's out there. So, what that means is, you know, as as they try to come up with new um, ways to, you know, determine if they can provide you terms, it's always important, and I can't stress it enough. It's very important to add new trade lines. It's very important to get better and bigger accounts. Utilization is, plays a big factor. That way, the banks don't have to ask you to personally guarantee anything, right? Keep in mind, at the beginning, with a brand new business, at times you might find yourself. You need a hundred thousand dollar loan. You don't have a payment history. Of course, a bank's going to ask you to personally guarantee it. You're going for an SBA, or you know, a, a, you know. Is, as a startup, of course the bank is going to ask you. So you need to make sure that your personal credit is on point 
Um, and, and if not, you need to be able to build the business credit the right way. And if that means adding, your, you know, tray lines, adding revolving lines, adding automobiles in the company name and all that good stuff. Um, so since your experience score is also based on personal credit history, it is very important that you also have your experience up to date. So your experience, your Equifax, uh, your TransUnion on your personal, and then that information can get disputed when it comes down to FICO. Looking at your TransUnion report can help you there as well, okay? And uh, repair your, your business credit going beyond disputes, right? Paying on time and in full will raise your business credit scores more than anything else. Obviously, you, you, we, we've said it through the whole uh, uh, stream, right? Uh, paying early is even more helpful. That's how you generate a score fast, and that's how you generate a really good score at a faster rate. Also, don't apply for too much credit at a time, as too many inquiries will lower your scores. When it comes down to, um, you know, applying for certain things, if you're at trying, you know, you're in trucking and you need a, a, a brand new truck or you need a brand new trailer, well, some of those, some of those dealerships will send you out to about 10 lenders to see which one's going to give you the most competitive rate. And sometimes, it, you know, they might send you off to 15. That's That will lower your score. And when other banks want to give you loans later on, they'll ask, why all these inquiries? Why are they there? Uh, and you don't have, you have 10 inquiries, but you don't have 10 accounts reporting or 10 accounts on, on your business credit report. What's going on here? So it definitely raises the question and then it throws you into a medium risk uh, type of business where a lot of banks won't take the risk with medium risk. They only want low risk or nothing. Okay, so it, instead use a business credit builder service, uh, like obviously us, Credit Suite, we can help you build business credit, not tied to your social through this uh, seven step proven process. It's been field tested. We've helped thousands and thousands of business owners just like yourself in every type of industry. Uh, we're not afraid of it. We have a lot of experience with the uh, the uh, major reporting agencies. We know how to overcome uh, the objections that they have. We know how to overcome the obstacles, the brick wall that we uh, that we run into from time to time as business owners. And of course, it's very important that you have a team like us that can help you drive the business, get you business credit, and all tied to your uh, all in the business EIN. Um, keep track of credit. Don't let problems slide. Problem, you know, when problems slide, that's when we get in trouble. Okay, so make sure that you have uh, all the information that you need. Make sure that you're on top of that, because guess what? Once you get that rolling, once you're accustomed to it, once you you get used to in the language and everything of business credit, you, you're good to go. I mean, you're going to be doing some really good stuff. Obviously, CreditSuite.com get funding is one of our or uh, you know, websites that you can use to get funding if you need immediate funding either for unsecured business financing loan or, or unsecured credit lines. Uh, but you wanna make sure that you're constantly uh, monitoring your business credit because you have to be able to catch problems before they become too bad. If you're not paying attention to the business credit, like I said, if you're a one person show and you're wearing many hats in your business and you're doing everything right now, you have to be able to have some sort of app or some sort of calendar connected to your fina your finances. Uh, it is crucial that you have some sort of application or some sort of reminder to make sure that you budget yourself accordingly, you're making the revenue that you need and you're not overpaying in certain areas. And it, when you see biz your business credit and your financials all connected in intertwined with your calendar and or apps, you can kind of go down the line and see, okay, am I paying too much in one area? And can I move and shuffle some money into a different area that's gonna make me more revenue? Okay, know what is happening with your credit. Personal credit is very important when it comes down to business credit. Although we stress the idea of not personally guaranteeing anything, but a lot of times, you listen, a lot of people are, you need to purchase something, especially in real estate. You need to purchase properties. You need to purchase uh, other things. And knowing where your credit stands, so when you personally guarantee a half a million dollars or a million dollar loan for, for, uh, for your business, you got to be where these banks want you to be. Okay, uh, just kind of touching a little light on that. Most of the lenders uh, that are out there that do SBAs or or get you UBF, UC, uh, UCL programs, they're usually looking for about a six seventy and above credit score. Uh, with uh, you know, with being on the on the credit bureau for at least two to three years, and uh, with some payment history. So um, that's one thing to keep in mind. Know what's happening with your credit, and know that you're hitting all the matrix uh, when it comes down to your personal credit. Uh, make certain it's being reported and take care of any mistakes as soon as possible. The sooner you take care of these mistakes, the sooner that you will be able to get things removed off your credit. And that at that point in time, you are, um, when you're ready six, nine months, you need funding and you need a bigger amount, it's much easier. Uh, get in the habit of checking credit reports monthly, 
okay? Uh, this is something that um, will happen, um, you know, if you can get it on a monthly basis, it'll work perfectly here for you. Uh, you know, um, you know, the, you know, monthly is, is you'll see what's happening. You'll see what's reporting. You see if you're a little over on utilization. So get in the habit of checking your query report, just like you would with your, uh, with your personal, right? Uh, and that you can get that through uh, nav.com. Uh, dig into the specifics and not just the scores. Okay. Sometimes the body of the, uh, and the trade lines, uh, you know, it, it speaks more than your credit score. And you will see that a lot of banks will make a determining factor based on payment history, uh, not so much on, on on credit score. So if you may be at a 78 and not an 80, but you have great payment history, banks will, will determine, but they want you an 80, banks will give you terms, believe it or not. So uh, surprising enough, we've seen it happen from time to time. Uh, we can help you monitor business credit at, at Experian and Dun & Brassie for only 24 bucks. So if if you want to run your business credit report, you want to see where we stand, uh, where you stand, uh, you know, just, just check us out at, uh, you know, creditsuite.com uh, forward slash monitoring. Uh, and that will allow you to run your business credit report. And if you need help um, reading your business credit report, what I advise is that you go to www.creditsuite.com forward slash monitoring and then book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with one of our account managers here or a business credit specialist. Because what's going to happen is we'll, we'll lead you uh, in, in, in down the path of learning how to read business credit. Uh, uh, reports, and that's very important. We'll, we'll educate you. We're always happy to have that dialogue with you and, and go into the details. Okay, this is business credit. This is what it's all about. This is where you're at. This is other trade lines. This is your score. You're, you're at low risk, high risk, medium risk. Um, you know, so this information is always needed. Don't hesitate. Pull your business credit report through a credit report. Excuse me, creditsuite.com forward slash monitoring. And book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. That way we can go over your credit report and then advise and give you the consultation that you need to know where you stand and where how far you can take your business credit. Okay. Um, all three of the big business credit reporting agencies welcome your disputes. Keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, they want their reports to be right. It is very important that their, their reports are correct. The uh, credit reporting agency that has a lot of inaccuracies uh, is, is governed and uh, it, they're, they're frowned upon in a lot of different industries. And based on a bank's module uh, or model, they will go and move towards a specific credit reporting agency because they are looking for certain things that model uh, their their mantra, their idea, and how they do business. So it's very important that these credit reporting agencies have the right information up to date with no inaccuracies, and they welcome you to dispute what is on there. I mean, believe it, you'll see, you'll see people on there that have uh, t big tax liens. They'll have uh, some other things that uh, they, they can get removed. It works all the time, okay? Just have your supporting document, make sure that you can present a really solid case and you will see it will get, the, the wording will get changed, uh, worst case scenario, or you can even get it removed completely, okay? Each credit reporting agency has its own scoring system, okay? Uh, in Telescore, Equifax, and you have Paydex, you have FICO, SBSS, uh, and its own way of handling disputes. Um, so you can raise your scores by paying on time and keeping inquiries low, just like you would when it comes down to personal. Uh, so it is, again, it, it, crucial. Easily and quickly get the financing that you need. Okay, get access to every le legitimate funding program in one place. Uh, you can find that at creditsuite.com forward slash get funding. Uh, you pay us no fees ever. All right. So if there's banks out there trying to collect all kinds of fees from you just for an application fee for this and that, we will never charge you for any fee to get you the funding that you need. We have about 300 pages of different lending programs. Our uh, business and finance officers here are really good at finding rates, terms, and and uh, and the uh, you know, lending opportunities that will be very surprised that your local bank or credit union is not offering. Uh, use our loan volume to get lower rates and fees because we do work in volume. Obviously, you may need only a hundred thousand, half a million dollar loan today, but that same bank we locked in, you know, maybe forty million dollars last month with them. Okay, so we're we're generating a lot of business with them, and obviously, there's a lot of strength there, and there's a lot of power there. Uh, business blueprint. Uh, that way, we will provide you one of those. That way, you can graduate to an SBA loan, uh, and we're always offering opportunities for those that have have you know, loans with other companies and want to maybe do an SBA or graduate to bigger and better things. Uh, never look for funding again, obviously, because when you have, it's a, we're a one-stop shop with all the lenders that you need. 
um, that will give you the opportunity now, where opposed to the, uh, the bigger banks or maybe the smaller credit unions that are local, uh, they have they just have one program, black and white, that's it. Um, we have more buying power. And obviously, how to repair business credit, you can always contact us at 877-600-2487, or you can email us at info at credit And um, obviously, uh, we, we are the, uh, the one-stop shop. If you need business credit building, or you want business funding, feel free to reach out here to us. Again, we are Credit Suite, Ty Crandall's company, uh, international speaker and uh, uh, and uh, business owner and CEO of Credit Suite. We thank you so much for the time and opportunity that you've given us here. Uh, subscribe to our channel, uh, click and subscribe and, and make sure that you never lose uh, one of these uh, live webinars that we provide on a weekly basis. Always trying to put out the best information here to our business owners. We thank you again for the time and opportunity and look forward to next week. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Hiram checking out. Bye now.